Now that the fuel line's taken care of, we can do the vacuum lines. I went ahead and replaced the vacuum advance line because the old line's pretty cracked and we're just asking for a vacuum leak if we don't. Now this particular vacuum advance uses ported or what they call timed vacuum. And the way we can tell that on the carburetor is if you're looking at the ports on the front, one is slightly higher than the other. If you look at this one, it's a little bit lower. This one's slightly higher on the carburetor. We're going to use the one that's slightly higher because that's above the throttle plates, which is ported or what they call timed vacuum. The other one we're not going to use. Now this is manifold vacuum. This car right here is a manual transmission car, so we don't need a vacuum line going down to the transmission's modulator valve. So we're just going to plug that off. Well, included with your carburetor is this little goodie package, and it has little extra goodies in there, uh, throttle balls, a uh, stud for the air cleaner, an air cleaner gasket, and some wire when we hook up the electric choke. So we're going to take one of the vacuum line plugs, we're just going to plug that one off. And then we have the PCV port right here, so we're just going to plug the PCV line in. We're going to reuse this line right here because it's fairly new. Now our vacuum lines are hooked up. Now we're ready to hook up the throttle linkage. Now Edelbrock carburetors are compatible with most styles of throttle linkages. Uh, in with the parts bag that you get with your carburetor, they also include the little ball and nut and washer for the GM applications. So we're going to go ahead and install that. Once that's nice and snug, now we can re-snap our throttle linkage in. And you want to check for full travel. Make sure you have a good, smooth, full travel. No binding or anything like that. And then most importantly, install a new return spring. This thing's really important. You want to make sure you got a good one on there. All right, now we're ready to hook up the electric choke. Now in the parts bag that comes with your carburetor, you'll have a couple of wires, a black one and a red one. The black one is the ground, and it's already set up for you with the correct spade terminal on it. So if we go down to the choke, we plug this into the spade terminal, and we can just simply ground it right to the housing of the choke terminal. So just take one of these out here. There's our ground source. Now all we have to do is hook a switched 12 volt source to activate the choke. Now here's what you don't want to do. Some people will tell you, oh, just hook it to the positive side of the coil. That's not a good idea because this is basically a flat wound spring in there that heats up, kind of like a direct short. Uh, what you don't want to do is take that drain and put it on your ignition system. Now some other people say, oh, hook it to the alternator. You don't want to do that either. Really what you want to want to do is get up underneath the dash, get on your fuse panel, and plug into a place that says keyed accessory. And that's where we're going to take it from. Okay, once we've hooked into the accessory side of the fuse box, we run our wire up through, bring it on in, and plug it right into the positive side of the choke. Now we've got power feed to the choke. Well, now that everything's hooked up, we're ready to fire this thing up. What we first need to do, though, is get some fuel from the fuel pump inside the carburetor so we can be able to start the motor. So the easiest thing to do is just crank the engine over for 10 or 15 seconds to prime the inside of the carburetor. Well, right when it's ready to fire up, it's a good idea to have a buddy get inside the car so you can kind of watch the carburetor make sure you don't have any fuel leaks or anything like that right upon initial startup. Well, that looks really good. Now, keep in mind, your Edelbrock carburetor comes right out of the box pretty much ready to go, but because there's so many different types of engines out there and different applications, you might need to do a little bit of extra tuning. We're going to show you how to do that. Okay, well we've already run this and checked for leaks. We had no fuel leaks. So we went ahead and ran it and got it to standard operating temperature. Now we're ready to adjust the air fuel mixture screws. I'm going to show you that real quick. That's these two screws right here. One operates one side of the carburetor, one operates the other. Now these only affect an idle. Anything above an idle, these don't work. Okay, so some people say, I'm going to richen up my carburetor. If you screw these out, you're opening up the needle and seat inside and allowing more fuel and air to go in at an idle. But it doesn't affect normal driving. Okay, now there's two ways to adjust these. 
when the engine's running, you can adjust them by putting a screwdriver in here and screwing it in until you're hearing the idle drop. As soon as it starts to drop, you say, okay, now it's starting to work and it's cutting the air and fuel off. So you start to back it out a little bit. Give it about another quarter to a half a turn and you're set. Then do the same thing to the other. Now that sets on the lean side of running. So if you want economy for running around town, you start, screw it in. So you're going to go clockwise with it. You're going to screw it in until the idle drops and then back it back out until you get the highest possible idle and then you're set and then do the same thing to the other. Now if you have a, a more of a performance car and you're going to want to be on the rich side, then do the opposite. Start screwing it out first go counterclockwise with it to allow more fuel and air in there and when it starts running rough then go back in another half turn or so and then set it and then do the same to the other side. So we're going to do that here. We're, this is an economy car. It's just a stock little uh, 327 in here. We're just going to do it for the economy side. So we'll go ahead and fire it up. Fire it up. <laughs> There's the idle drop. So we're going to back it up. Do the same to this side. You hear the idle drop down. Now we're just going to adjust the regular idle. And we're set. Alright, when you're done with your installation, be sure to top off your new carburetor with a great looking Edelbrock air cleaner. This one right here is a model 1221. It's specifically designed to fit your new carburetor. Of course, we have other models to choose from too, and you can check those out online on our website at www.edelbrock.com. If you have any other tech questions, you can give our tech line a call too at 1-800-416-8628.